get started uh, with some of the preliminaries, and then I'll um, so we'll start with uh, Mike McGinn uh, to come up and talk a little bit about the Next Generation IT Club. Uh, the Next Generation IT Club sponsors the uh, pizza and pot networking session that follows the speaker series. So I want to give them uh, a warm thank you, and Mike's going to tell you a little bit about the club. So. Hi, thank you all for coming today. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Uh, my name is Michael McGinn, and I'm the president of the Next Generation IT Club here at the college. We've been in the uh, club for two years now. Um, we do uh, workshops and so forth on uh, up and coming IT information uh, skills and so forth. And we offer some interesting uh, services for the students uh, a project website uh, where they can uh, upload their, their class projects and build a portfolio over the, the two years that they're here, or, or longer, depending on what programs they're taking. And uh, we're putting together a, a student hosting uh, service. Uh, we're still working out the details on how that's going to happen, but hopefully we'll get it up and running by next quarter. We've got some flyers there to pass out. And I just wanted to uh, invite you all to come out to a meeting. Uh, we have meetings every Wednesday from 11 to 1 p.m. in CC3. Uh, 234. And with that, I'll turn it over to Brian and introduce our speakers, and we'll get on with the uh, event. Great. And um, spring quarter, uh, look for a uh, tech fair. Oh, yes, the tech fair. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's still, still in the works. Uh, sometime toward the end of spring quarter, we'll have about a four hour event after the last speaker series. Um, we'll have some demonstration uh, software set up and some hardware set up. So folks that want to get some hands-on experience with playing with machines and some of the software and stuff like that, they'll be able to. Wednesday, uh, the meeting's Wednesday, uh, 11 to 1 11 to 1. 11 to 1. In CCT 134. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, thank you all for coming. It's my pleasure to introduce our speakers uh, from Coal Fire. Uh, so Rick Norman and Tom McAndrew are here today to talk to us uh, about the work that they do. Um, Rick um, has been, it says here, 25 years of experience in the uh, IT security field, working in, with businesses to help them be sure that their data is secure. Uh, he's um, worked on teams addressing uh, information security threats and compliance risks. Um, I, working with identity and access management, data loss prevention, and security information event monitoring. So, Rick Norman here. And Tom McAndrew, uh, your your role at Coal Fire is currently as the director I of manage our professional services. For, oh, yeah. Professional services. And um, we met Tom also in, under his role as um, the current president of the Seattle chapter of the Information Systems Audit and Control Association, the ISACA. All right, got it right. Practicing all the time. So, uh, and that's this uh, professional organization that really deals with a particular aspect of information security. And I'll play more about that. So, thank you for coming. Well, thanks everyone. Um, I, yeah, I was thinking about kind of what I was going to share with you guys, uh, and so what I thought I'd do is I would just uh, want to kind of explain, I think, you know, where I'm at today, and maybe there'll be certain things of where I'm at in my life professionally or career-wise, or might be places that you guys either are at or would like to be, and so I'll share with you, you know, where I'm at and, uh, and, and maybe how I got here. I don't know if it will work in the same way uh, for you guys, but it, it's worked for me. So. Just quickly, kind of, you know, you probably haven't heard of uh, Coal Fire at all, but right now um, I'm on a couple different things. So I'm on a couple different boards. So I'm on the board here for uh, Cascadia Community College Foundation. Uh, so yeah, I'm really passionate about education. I think there's a big gap between uh, the open jobs that are available and the skill sets of people that need to do it. And I'm really passionate about uh, community college and some of the technical training being the gap to get people to get there. So that's how I joined uh, the, the foundation board here. Uh, I'm also president of a uh, uh, ISACA, and what that is is basically anyone in the Seattle area that's an information security manager, an audit, or compliance uh, is, is part of that group. And so part of that, what you've done is I've reached out to about a 
half a dozen of those folks, and those are the speakers that you guys are going to see here over the next uh, couple weeks. So hopefully some of those speakers will be valuable for you guys and can provide the input. So Rick Norman here, before I snag him over to Coal Fire, uh, he worked at Costco for 25 years and that, that was an information security uh, manager there and did a bunch of things. And so hopefully you can kind of see that a lot of these guys are uh, in a lot of different positions. Most of the folks I'm working with love what they're doing uh, and we're, uh, you know, we're fortunate, but also kind of probably have some common things that help them kind of get where they're at. So uh, with that, I just kind of wanted to start with, uh, with what started me on my career was, it wasn't that long ago, it was about 15 years ago, uh, you know, I've always been a, a, a technology person, whether it's video games or iPads or even the next thing that's coming out. And I remember thinking that in the mid-90s, uh, I didn't know really what I wanted to do with myself, and I thought, I knew a little bit about security, and I thought that was something that I probably wanted to do. And so one of the first things I did is I reached out uh, to a friend of mine who was at Microsoft, and I said, hey, do you know someone that's in the information security field? Can I just have lunch with them and talk to them? And so that was what I first did back then, and that person was uh, was great. They provided some input to me and gave me some guidance on what sort of certifications they did, and what sort of jobs they had. And, and uh, while I was doing that, I was also looking at some other career paths that I thought were great, but after I talked to those people and saw what they did, it turned out not to really be something that you know, was lying to me. So one of the first things I did was, one, I, I tried to find what I wanted to do, and then I connected myself with people that were doing what I was doing, asked them how they got there, uh, and then um, I've been lucky to have just a, a bunch of mentors that helped me kind of get to where I want. Um, and so even within that, you know, through, through college, uh, I wasn't really a computer science major. I decided to be an economics major, so I still didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do with an IT. Uh, I went to the Naval Academy and graduated, and it was really with my time in the in the Navy uh, that I really learned that uh, computer security and information technology was what was what I was what uh, what I was interested in. Um, yeah, I did a couple different a uh, couple of deployments to the Gulf, and uh, I was in charge of the displays. So if you go like any aircraft carrier or see you can see the the big displays that all the you know the decision makers are looking at. Well, the the good news is I was in charge of those displays, so I had a lot of visibility within the ship. The bad news was they were displays. If there's anything wrong with them, I I was uh, tasked to figure out what was wrong, and it didn't matter whether it was my stuff. So if I had bad data that was fed in, uh, you know, if the ship's gyro was off, if there was electrical signals that were off, if the encryption technology was off, it didn't matter. My job was to figure out how to make the display accurate. So that's really what kind of you know launched me into kind of understanding this kind of holistic view of IT security and all the different components that feed into things. So I was very lucky to get experience from satellites to radios to military frequencies to electrical engineering and gyroscopes and, and all that uh, fun stuff. So that kind of allowed me to get together and that allowed me to kind of take my next job, which was dealing with uh, interoperability. And so the, the next position I really had within the Navy was uh, the Navy, if you, if you aren't aware, the, the Navy had a, a bunch of IT, major IT failures in the 90s. Um, and actually started out probably early in 1987, there was a Navy warship. The only, the only ship we've ever had that's been attacked in the United States successfully from an anti-ship missile was the Stark. Uh, and in 1987, uh, Iran and Iraq were fighting each other. The Stark got attacked um, and uh, it got hit by two missiles. And with all the technology that it had on board, guess how they detected that the missiles were coming in? I saw somebody was on I, a 20-year-old kid on the front of the boat, looked out, saw a missile coming in, and it, and it hit the ship. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it killed about 27 sailors, but from that, the Navy kind of realized that you know, the technology was only as good as how it was being implemented. Um, and, and a year later, as the tensions kept brewing, the, the Navy put a bunch of technology on ships. And in 1988, the, uh, the Vincennes, which is a Navy cruiser, accidentally shot down uh, an Iranian commercial Airbus. Uh, and that was because what they'd done is they, they put in all this technology, they hadn't trained people how to use it, um, there's some technical flaws and there's some human flaws, and they basically, from the weapon systems, they believed that it was a, a, a MiG, or a, a, an Iranian aircraft that was coming down and attacking the, the warship. The ship was already kind of under attack by some small gunboats. Um, you know, they, they shot off some missiles and, and, and they did that. So that was another part that, that, from the Navy, you know, they kind of learned from those lessons. Not having technology enabled was a big deal. Having enabled too much uh, could cause issues. And in the 90s, they started using uh, the scraping technology called Windows NT to start uh, streamlining the engineering plants. And as they started replacing kind of old technology with new technology, they found out that software bugs, so there's a basic buffer overflow that they, they had that was a, a, a issue within a, a ship, 
and it basically took the whole ship out of commission for two years. Wow. So we lost a multi-billion dollar, you know, uh, cruiser uh, from a deployment because of a software bug uh, in how a ship integrated and the ship could have So those are some of the lessons that the Navy learned that as I was starting to work, you know, get on, I was able to work with a lot of people and understand how the Navy did compliance and why it was so important how they deal with double security. And I realized that was a good niche for me because I didn't want to, I remember thinking about that when I was sitting around deployment thinking what I really want to do when I got out of the Navy. So I really don't want to compete in technology where another 18 year old kid is going to spend more time, be better than me, probably be willing to do stuff for less money than me. I wanted to find a unique niche that would kind of differentiate myself from some other folks. And so security was one that I that I kind of plug on to and it, then it turned out to be, uh, it would be great. Um, so as part of that, you know, I went back to school again and I got my master's of IT in information technology and at the time there wasn't a lot of um, information security classes. I mean, this is even just like a, you know, a decade ago. Um, there wasn't a lot of information security classes. There were general IT classes and there might have been some kind of subsets. Um, and what I did is I picked a, a, a school at the University of Maryland. They had this class that, that was called an NSA Center of Excellence. They were just starting to establish those and now they have dozens of those schools now around. And so that's where I got some formal training in information security. Uh, and then when I got done with that, I was, I was getting ready to graduate, and I thought, you know what, I really needed to kind of round out another, another part that I had. So I was an economics major, I was an IT security guy, and uh, I realized that more and more of my interactions, my value was more that I could take complicated technical issues and troubleshoot those with business managers and other owners. And I realized the area that I was missing in my life, there was the, the business side of things. So I went back to school again, here at University of Washington, and I got my MBA. And for me, that, that's what turned out to be a great deal, because what I'm finding um, is that right now, people that can write well, understand technology, and you know, can have a regular conversation are in very high demand right now. Uh, you know, there's a lot of technical people that can write, there's a lot of people that can write but don't know the technology, and there's a lot of people that can do both but don't understand kind of the fundamentals of a business or something like that. And so you know, one of those things that would be kind of my advice to you guys as you guys are looking at kind of expand your career is we're going to naturally kind of tend to one of those kind of three areas um, and within them what I'm finding is that people that can learn to kind of overcome in some of the areas that they aren't strong on. Like for me, it was writing. I, uh, if you look at my SAT scores, my math was very good and my writing was not, not, very, not very good at all. And part of that was I'd never read really growing up. I played with computers and I did that stuff <laughs> and I didn't like reading books. Uh, and I thought it was interesting because when I took the GMAT, uh, which is for the MBA class, I, I, you know, I, I didn't even study math. So it only goes up to like geometry, so I didn't think I'd even need to do it. And I was interested because this was maybe you know eight years after I took my my uh, uh, my SATs, my scores were flip flopped. That I realized that in the last five or ten years, my strengths were not really around math and quantitative analysis, but more of kind of the softer skills. So as part of that, when I was getting out of the Navy, I was trying to decide you know, what do I really want to do with my life. I, I traveled all around the, the country and the world, and I, you know, I grew up here, and uh, I wanted to move back here with my wife, and she wanted to go back to school. So I made a decision to, uh, to jump into the commercial side. I didn't want to be pigeonholed to just being a military guy or just doing stuff with the DOD. I wanted to uh, kind of expand my horizons. And so uh, what happened is uh, the president of our company, who was a, a West Point grad, reached out to me when I was looking around. He said, hey, do you want to, uh, do you want to join the small company called Coal Fire? Me and the other uh, co-founders you know, started this a couple of years ago. Uh, we, this is our seventh business. We've done this a lot of times. You can come and join. It's going to be a wild ride. You're going to work really hard, but you'll learn a whole lot. And so I joined you know, Coal Fire six years ago, uh, and we had, I think, about you know, 20 people. We had two offices. The Seattle office had like five people. Uh, today, we have over 100 people. I've hired 30 people just to report to me within the last six months, uh, and I'm planning on hiring another 150 uh, in the next uh, two years. Uh, we went and got some venture capital funding, so I got $5 million of venture capital funding, so that was always an area that intrigued me is, you know, what does it take to grow and grow a business uh, and to work with people that have done that before? So I've been able to do that kind of in, in, in my niche as well uh, here today. So as part of that, you know, I'll, uh, I'll kind of turn it over to Rick, but what I just kind of want to share my experience is I've, I've been very fortunate to kind of do what I'm doing, um, and I think really a lot of it has been um, just uh, just the great people that I've been able to, to network with. 
Um, and I know that's something that's very difficult for folks to, to do. I know a lot of people that are looking for a job and say, I'd like to network, but I don't know how. Uh, or like I'm in LinkedIn and I see LinkedIn requests from people that I have never heard of or, or have never met. Um, and the good, good part is you guys are already kind of in a community. You've already got people that have some similar um, skill sets or some similar things that you like doing. And these can be things from going outdoors and going hiking or doing something, but I can't tell you uh, how different my life has been because I've just been so fortunate to have different mentors that have been able to kind of, you know, spend time with me, invest the time, and uh, that's what I'm hoping to do here. Whatever I can do to kind of share my experience and uh, give you guys any advice, I'd be more than happy to do that. So before I move on to that, the best advice I can give you is from Rick Norman. So uh, I, I, uh, I convinced Rick, you know, I, I, I'd been talking with him for several years when he was over at Costco. And, you know, as, as, as Coal Fire was growing, I've always been kind of like looking to figure out, you know, who, who might be another good fit. And uh, I was very fortunate to, uh, to, to convince Rick to come join our team. How long have been with us now? About four months. Four months. So four months ago, you know, after 25 years mostly working with, within Costco, Rick decided to leave and, and come join our, our, our company. And so that was something that was very you know, satisfied to me is people that have been doing a career, that have been somewhere that very well established, um, you know, in companies like Costco, uh, were looking to make that change and join a, a small company. And so that was something that was nice to say, to, to build a company and do that. Now the challenge is obviously retaining guys like Rick and then building a path for folks like Rick so that you can kind of expand and grow the business. So Rick will talk about it, but if you'll see a year from now, hopefully Rick will be uh, leading our uh, San Diego office as we're expanding and growing out. I'll go ahead, uh, assuming if you do um, participate in LinkedIn, I'm going to leave my business cards up here. Uh, my email address is pretty easy, but still, I'll leave these here. Feel free to take it um, and use it uh, you know, how you see fit to better yourself. Before I get too far into this, what I'd like to do is just kind of kind of hear from you, pull the, the audience here, what what are you here for? Why are you at Cascadia? Yeah. I'm here to uh, develop my web application programming skills. Okay. Right. So that I can implement uh, applications on web-based uh, devices and mobile devices and so forth. Okay, great. Anybody else? Okay, I don't know where it would fit best, but this stuff's amazing. So it's pretty, pretty intriguing technology, isn't it? But yeah, until I mean, so you start getting your feet wet and all of it, don't really know which way you want to migrate to, where your strengths are going to be. So, okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I, I'm learning web apps also. I have been involved in SQL. Uh, I want to meld them together. Because of my vision, I didn't have 2020 vision. Uh, on a vacation, we ended up uh, when I was 16. We traveled back and did this big Western state uh, tour. We stopped off at Colorado Springs, and it, it's a, just a fantastic place. Um, and if you're ever in the area, I encourage you to go and you know just kind of check it out. What, what you can do. But that's kind of where I figured out I'm not going to be able to be a fighter pilot when I grow up. I was very disappointed. Um, but it's one of those things I've always, I've always been fascinated with flight technology. Uh, as a kid, I was very much into the math science. That was my focal point. Thought English, didn't need it. Who cares about it? Not important. Until 
I had to start writing technical reports uh, when I got further on um, in my, my college career. So when I was in high school, I knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wanted to be a physicist. So in my junior year of high school, a science teacher who had a passion for science and technology, he comes back, this is in San Diego County, he comes back because San Diego State had one of the top three in the country optics and lasers program. So he comes back, has this material, I get all jazzed about it. And so from that moment on, I plot my course to go get my degree in physics. Now I had to get it in physics because that's where the program existed. Other places um, in Georgia, I'm forgetting what that college is out there, there's a, a famous college in, in, um, in Atlanta uh, that had that program as well. But it's typically you'll find it in the electrical engineering. You've got to become a double E. Somewhere in the engineering sciences is where that, that lies. But at San Diego State, it was in the physics department. So I'm going to be a physicist. That was my plan. Okay. So I'm here in high school. I start off, I went to a community college. So I have. So as Tom has things that he's passionate about and he's had people kind of mentor him at different times, uh, mine's not quite the same. Um, I'm the first college graduate in my family tree. So I start off, I end up having, just as a, as a timeline, in my senior year of high school, I, I started the community college and I end up with an AS degree. Because I'm going to transfer as a junior to San Diego State. So I, I figure out, plot everything. What do I need to take? What are the minimum courses? Hopefully I'm not taking English um, and so forth. Well, I ended up taking one of the best classes of my life and it was a remedial English class. It was like um, English 90, I think. And that's where I really learned some of the fundamentals that I was lacking. I, I had the math. So as soon as I started here, my first math class was calculus because throughout I had you know, been focused on math science, thought English wasn't important. As Tom described, there's some people that are good in the technical, there's, but don't under, they, they can't write to save their life. There's other people that are great writers, but they don't know the technology. Okay, I was more on the technology side, but couldn't write. Um, you do end up having to write <laughs> if you, go into kind of the heavy sciences because you end up writing papers, you write a senior thesis. Um, if you get an advanced degree, you've got to write a master's thesis. So writing is important. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir in this case. But I get my AS degree. So two-year colleges are, are uh, I think, a critical um, component to an education for many of us, uh, especially if you don't have the money to go to an expensive four-year college. So I get my AS degree, transfer as a junior to San Diego State, and I end up getting my bachelor's degree. This time period is six years, six years total for me to get my BS in physics. Now I was working, I've been working since I was like 15 and a half, uh, and so I was working 30, 35 hours a week going to school and trying to manage all of that. Then after that, oh, this, so I'm working at Costco at the time. I'm uh, like cashiering, pushing carts in this area, and then mm -hmm. kind of moving up, right? So I become kind of the technical go-to guy, doing phone systems and things like that within the warehouse, the point of sale, because I can figure out how to suddenly strip uh, strip apart the coax cable so you can put a BNC connector on it, all that kind of cool stuff. It's things I like. So I had the technology and that interest. I end up fast forward another five years on top of that, then I get my master's. So it took me 11 years out of high school to where I finally end up with a master's in physics. Now, why did I go physics? I was going to get my MBA, but I would have had to take more classes because down here, I didn't have kind of the, the basic business. Plan. So I would have had like double the, the credits that I needed. 
So I said, I'll forget that. I'm just going to go physics. I know that. <laughs> um, this wasn't easy, but, um, you know, in hindsight, well, hindsight's always 20 20, right? If I'd have known I was going to be where I'm at today, which, by the way, I feel like I'm in a really great spot. I didn't plan to be uh, leading our payment card industry data security standard practice from the Seattle office working with you know great people like Tom. I didn't plan that, I didn't calculate that, I would have, I had no way of foreseeing that in the future, especially way down here, right? I, I, don't, I had no idea. So where this ends up leading to is I'm working, um, in my very background, I worked in accounting, I was an accounting trainer when they started the department at Costco. That's what got my wife and I and our family up here. 16 years ago, they started a new department. I traveled around the country and taught inventory auditors, warehouse managers, how to use the accounting system to help control training. I wasn't in IT then. Still wasn't there. I have this passion for the science and all of that, but no real outlet for it, um, other than watching, you know, cool TV shows or, or you know, still getting, you know, Scientific American, things like that, right? The guy. Uh, what's that? The guy. <laughs> the guy. Oh, I love that show, right? <laughs> <laughs> How did you get into accounting inventory from that? What's that? How did you get into accounting inventory from that? That's a great question. So at the time, there was, Costco merged with another company called Price Club that was started in San Diego. The founder of that whole retail industry, Saul Price, started the Price Company. There are folks from that company is what started Costco. So Costco was a mirror of the business model and in technology as well, because uh, like, IT people came as well, right? So there was, there was a lot of similarities there. And so Jim Senegal, who just retired from being the, the, uh, the CEO, he actually started with Saul back in the 50s, I believe, a company called Fedmark. So there's a lot of history there, a lot of the leadership, they all worked together for the last 40 plus years. So that, that merging of those two companies was actually a fantastic um, situation for both companies. So how did I get in uh, to there? So when they, the guy that started the department in the accounting department, what he remembered me from doing presentations from the time of the merge the accounting systems, the buying systems, they were, they were different, right? So now they want to kind of merge it all together, which is not an easy task. Um, I was an inventory auditor at the time, which I loved that job. And he remembered me from being in some of the seminars because I would raise my hand and ask a question. It's like every presentation I go to, for some reason, I find a way to ask a question because I'm curious, right? I Like you guys are doing, you're interacting, you're obviously paying attention, you're listening. And, and I like to do that because I'm always trying to think, okay, what can this speaker do for me? What is this speaker going to say that will help me in my career, that will help me where I'm at, give me some kind of nugget? So I'm always listening for something that they're going to provide to help me. So, but he remembered me from that. And it just so happened that we were interested in relocating. I wanted to move up in the company. And in order to do that, you have to, if you're in retail and you want to be a store manager or something of that nature, you're most likely going to have to relocate a number of times. Because you don't typically be a store manager for 20 years at the same store. They typically move you around. He remembers me, we come up here, I'm doing the accounting training thing, I'm traveling around the country, and then some opportunities open up. Costco decides, hey look, we can't get enough RPG programmers, and that's a language on the AS400, which is a mid-range system. Uh, they can't find enough of those people. They decide, hey look, we've got great employees who are working in different areas of the company that they may have a passion, they may have a background in technology, why don't we open this up and start an internal training program and teach Costco, existing Costco employees how to program on the system? 
What a great way, right? You understand the company, you understand the business, you may have worked in the warehouse or in corporate, something like that. That's how I got into technology. That was in 1998 and I've been in it ever since. So that was an opportunity that was, uh, I, I took it, I ran with it, I found a passion for it, and all of the, my background, all this education, Yes, I'm not designing laser systems, it's true. I'm not involved in that like I had my formal education, but it all came into play. And that was one of the things I kind of want to just encourage you today is that you may be headed towards doing things with you know, SQL Server or integrating web applications with middleware and backend uh, programming or doing database queries or doing UI design. You might be doing modeling, architecture, Maybe you get into security, maybe you don't. Whatever you're targeting, whatever you're planning, it's not going to be for naught. You may not see it right away. You may not see where you're going to end up being. But I would just encourage you to, to just continue to do the thing that you're passionate about and hopefully you know, lead down the path that you want to go to. But there are so many opportunities these days especially if you have a technical background and you can write. Now, let's say that you, you're not a very good writer. There is one person, the, the guy that hired me, um, he actually runs the, the gas stations at Costco. The, he ended up moving on to that. When they opened up Costco Gasoline, he was a director over that and ran, director of operations and ran all of the gas stations and rolled them out and so forth. So he's been doing that since 99, I think. 97. Anyways, but what what he did that helped me, he's one of a couple of people that I could easily call out, where 